Hi and welcome to Demystifying Math. In this lesson we're going to be creating a formula to find the surface area of a frustum. On the left is a frustum. Notice it's very closely related to a cylinder except the sides are slanted. On the right is a net of the frustum. In other words what we've done is taken the frustum, sliced it down the center, and laid it flat. What we're going to be doing in this lesson is trying to find a formula for the surface area of the frustrum. And we can do that by using isosceles trapezoids. On the left we have four trapezoids that are estimating the area of the frustrum. As we increase the number of trapezoids, we will get a better estimate for the surface area of the frustrum. Notice that as we increase the number of trapezoids, the height of the trapezoid comes closer to the slant height of the frustrum. Remember that the height of a trapezoid is perpendicular to both bases of the trapezoid. The slant height of the frustrum is not perpendicular to the both bases. But the length of the slant height and the height itself are going to come closer and closer together as we increase the number of trapezoids. We're going to start with the formula for the area of one trapezoid one-half the height times the sum of the two bases. Since we have n trapezoids that form the frustrum, we're going to multiply our formula by n. We also saw that as n goes to infinity, the height of the trapezoid approaches the slant height of the frustrum. So in our formula, we're going to replace height with slant height L. Then we multiply the n inside of the parentheses. If you look at what n times b1 is, it's really the, an estimate for the length of the inner arc. It's the sum of the bottom bases of the trapezoids. n times b2 is a sum of the top bases of all the trapezoids. When n is large, the sum of the bottom bases approaches the length of the inner arc, and the sum of the upper bases approaches the length of the outer arc. We can find the lengths of the inner and outer arcs by looking at the frustum itself. That's really the circumference of the bottom base is equal to the length of the inner arc. And the circumference of the top base is equal to the length of the outer arc. We know that the bases are circles, so we're using the formula pi r squared to get the length of the inner arcs and the outer arc. So we have nb1 is 2 pi r1 and nb2 is 2 pi r2. Substituting that into our formula, we have 1 half the slant height times 2 pi r1 plus 2 pi r2. Notice that the 1 half and the 2's that are inside the parentheses cancel out. Then we factored out the pi and just moved the slant height to the end. So I have pi times the sum of the two radii of the frustrum times the slant height of the frustrum. And that's going to give us our surface area for the frustrum. Remember this is an open-faced frustrum, no bases that are included in the surface area. So it's really just a lateral area. Okay. We can rewrite this formula using the average radius. So if we average our two radii together, we get R1 plus R2 over 2. And then what I did was multiply that by 2 so that we're not changing our formula in any way. So we have 2 pi times R, where R represents the average radius times L. So this gives us a formula for the surface area of a frustrum, 2 pi r l. Remember, r is going to represent the average radius. All right, so let's put this to use. Suppose that we had a frustrum that had radii of length 4 and 8. That would mean that their average radii length would be 6, and the slant height of 7. So plugging into our formula for the surface area of the frustrum, we have 2 pi times our average radius, which is 6, times 7, which gives us 84 centimeters squared. 
Thank you for tuning in for Demystifying Math. Please feel free to contact me at demystifyingmath at comcast.net.